Hello and welcome to more Banjo Tooie. What do you say we go through this tunnel and find out what is on the other side? All uh, there we go. Transition. Hooray! And through here we have the Isle o Hags. This is the Jinjo Village part of it. Essentially, the Isle of Hags is the overworld for this game. So the all the levels are kind of connected to it. So I guess first thing we're gonna do is walk right up to this magic glowing thingy. This is one of my silos. Open up some more to create a network of shortcut tunnels. So exactly like what he says, if we can find these in different parts of the overworld, then we can work between them. It's not like the first game where there's cauldrons that have uh, specific colors or anything. Um, all silos are connected to all the other silos. Let's go inside one of these buildings. They're all gone. Come and see me in my throne room, and I'll tell you what happened. This is my palace. Not bad, eh? How does he go from, like, being sad because they're all gone, and then suddenly he's bragging about his castle? What is wrong with you, dude? Well, this right here is the Green Jinjo family house, and as you can see, like he said, they are all gone. We can go to all the different colors, and they're all totally empty. And this one right here, this one just got totally destroyed. I guess let's go read the sign here. This is an information signpost. Press B when next to want to read it. Yes, we have to get information about how to read a sign to get information. So yes, in loving uh, memory of the Grey Jinjo family, they got destroyed. We already know what that digging machine was, so kind of wrecked them. But I guess let's just go ahead and go up to the castle here, or the, the palace, whatever they want to call it. I'm not going to deal with these uggers right now. Let's just go up, go inside. And I guess I'll skip the honeycombs as well. Ah, get up there! Come on! Thank you. Hello, mister, we're here. We saw your telepathic message. I don't know how he was talking to us. Maybe he's either he's either very loud or somehow telepathic. Oh, look at that little critter. He's got like a little slug thing. Yo, what's up? I'm King Jingling, king of all things Jinjo and ruler of this village. Your kingdom seems a bit empty. Yeah, a little bit empty. My people were scared away by those witches and their giant machine. I kind of like it quiet, but I need to get them all back for the kickball tournament next week. Yes, that is what matters, not their safety or anything. It's all about the kickball tournament. But there's a big kickball rivalry between the Jinjos and the Moles, which means there could be trouble if we don't turn up. Yep. So, that is sort of the plot, not necessarily for this game in general, but for this portion, well, we're trying to save some Jinjos for a kickball tournament. But thankfully, he gives us a big reward right here. We get our first Jiggy, so we can use that to... Well, like the first game, it's going to be used to unlock stages, so very handy. And without that, we really can't progress the game at all. So he's talking about some Ancient Order, some Crystal Jiggy, all kinds of weird stuff. This game gets a little bit strange, as you'll see coming up pretty soon here. But he says only the Crystal Jiggy can open up the worlds. Uh, did they just call him King Dingling? Oh, man. Well, there's a little hole inside Bottle's house. Uh, that's his son right there. We might have to go inform him that his dad is kind of dead. I know, this game is pretty dark, it's fairly sad, but <laughs> I guess that's the turn they wanted to take. The first game was just too happy and everything. But before we can go inside, there we got more cutscenes! Heck yeah! Don't worry guys, the long cutscenes are not going to be a running theme for too much of this game, but they kind of just dump a whole bunch on you right away. Meanwhile! I guess this is going to be the Gruntilda not Gruntilda sisters, the Winky Bunyan sisters. Oh no, they got a giant laser! It's like the Death Star. Or pretty much any evil scientist, evil horror villain, they always seem to have a giant destruction laser. Oh, there they all are. Wow, Grunty is huge! For some reason I thought Grunty was smaller than Blob Elda, but apparently not. She's even bigger. Yeah, this is my favorite part. I love that uh, she's complaining about Grunty's rhyming. It's just, it's a little bit funny when they all have their own uh, speech quirks, and she's complaining about one of the other one's speech quirks. Uh-oh, not the Bob Control. It's the big old blaster. So yeah, her name is uh, Mingella, but it's Minji for short. I'm not sure if it's meant to be Mingi or Minji. I'm just going to say Minji. So I kind of blanked on her name last time, but we got this. So they're trying to fill up this life force tank so they can restore Grunty to her living self. I mean, she seems totally fine as a skeleton. I'm not sure what the big deal is. Maybe it's kind of annoying having her eyeballs fall out and stuff, so maybe that's kind of their reason for going through with this plan. 
But that's their objective. They're trying to drain the life force of things to restore Grunty to her original body. Uh-oh. So it's not so much a destruction laser, so much it is a life force sucking laser. You can see right there is a blow and a suck button. Sounds kind of like Kirby right here. And they have a, a target on King Jingling right now on that little low quality green screen. Oh dang, they got auto targeting. All right, go for the suck button. Activate sucking power. It's like a vacuum, except giant. And instead of sucking up dirt, it sucks up life energy. It's kind of like a spirit bomb, but more violent and less spirit bomby. We've, we've seen the shot. Okay. <laughs> we were stuck on that shot for like five seconds. I was just sitting there waiting for it to end. I told you guys, sometimes they'll hold on shots for way too long in this game. Uh-oh. So they're going to steal the life force of the building. Oh, no. I didn't even know the building had a life force. And once again, during these cutscenes, you can't actually speed up the dialogue, so it kind of crawls along a little bit slowly, but that's all right. Uh-oh, what about the traitor jingling? They just destroyed his house. It was so beautiful. He was just bragging about how nice it was, and... Oh, I guess it's destroyed, and along with that, he's suddenly kind of a zombie. Yep. So we have killing, we have stealing, gambling, and we have zombification. All within the first two episodes of this game. It's pretty violent. And this calls itself a family game. They're gonna blast the whole island? Oh, come on! So they needed a big charge up. So they're trying to get a big charge so they can zap the entire island, but of course we gotta try to stop them. Yep, we gotta get our revenge. They totally just zapped King Jingling. It makes you wonder where, they, where did the gingers actually go? Hmm. I never really thought about that. I guess the gingos are just scattered. I'll never get to you in time. I bet you I will. Haha. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. So we finally have control of our character again. There's some more areas over this way that you can explore. There's some ogres to kill and all that, but there's really not too much to do in uh, the Isle of Hags right now, at least on the uh, Jinjo village part. So let's just go inside Bottle's house. We gotta go break the bad news to his family that he's passed away. Also, I forgot to point this out. You can see these things uh, change colors back and forth. Basically, whichever color you touch when you pick it up, that's the color feather you'll get. So if you need red feathers, go for red. If you need gold, go for the gold. But, uh, I think that's Bottles' wife. She's kind of, she can tell she loves him because she has a giant picture of Bottles right behind. Uh, let's go break the bad news. Uh... Yeah, how you doing? Oh my gosh, you can hear the kid, like, yelling "Wee!" in the background when he's playing with his toy. Yeah, um, yeah, he's definitely okay. He's, uh, he's not dead. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be back. I don't know if we ever revive him here, but let's go check out his room here. And for some reason, why are there enemies in there? Okay, maybe that's why the gingers got driven out, because there's gosh dang uggers and grunty dactyls everywhere. The people were scared away by those witches in their giant machine. But there's a giant picture of Mrs. Bottles over the bed right there. That's kind of weird. But really not much we can do in that room, so let's go over to this side. Now, there's going to be a split path right here. We can go left or right, but I want to go left first and talk to this guy. Playing with his little squeaky toy. Hello there, kid. Hi, Goggles. Yeah, we're, we're great friends. Uh, he's doing totally fine. So, for talking to him, it's going to be pretty awesome. We'll get the Omezo Gaze glasses. So, it's kind of a strange upgrade. I'm not even sure why this is here, but now what we can do is we can press Y to go into our first person view like this. And if we pull, if we press up or down on the right C stick, I don't know why I see C stick, the right or ugh, up or down on the right analog stick, whatever, you can zoom in and out. So now we can zoom way too far into this beautiful Jet Force Gemini poster. Oh yeah. I actually love Jet Force Gemini. Maybe I need to play that one at some point, but we'll see. Let's go talk to this guy. Hey there, Banjo. How you doing, Specky? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, your dad's definitely going to compete in that kickball tournament, dude. Yeah, your dad's definitely a hero. That's, that's true. Oh my gosh, I could see another Jet Force Gemini poster in the background. Love that game. Holy crud. I've never actually beaten Jet Force Gemini, but I have rented it from the video store a whole bunch back in the day as a kid. So I've played quite a lot of it, but I never actually owned it. 
So one of these days I need to pick that one up and actually beat it. And uh, maybe I'll do a Let's Play at some point, but we'll see. We can zoom way too far into this poster. Oh dang. Look at those shoes. That's like a full screen shoe right there. Okay, so let's exit our full screen here. And let's finally head off to this area. So we're still going to be in the Isle of Hags, but we're going to be in the Wooded Hollow instead of uh, wherever we were before. And of course this guy, the, the Jiggy Wiggy Temple that uh, King Jingling was telling us about, that's what this is over here. So we'll go get that in just a minute. But first, let's go and actually hit this silo right here. Watch out for these enemies. Just go activate that. And there we go, the lights turning green, which means we activated it. Now I'm actually going to go down this tunnel because there should be a Jinjo back here. Let's go kill this guy. Come here. Oh, come on. Thank you. So we have a black Jinjo. Now the color of the Jinjo you find is actually random. It could be one of like nine different colors. So that is one out of nine black Jinjos. So he's going to go back to his home. I'll explain how these all work in just a minute. They give you a bit of an explanation right here as we watch this little cinematic. So it's going to go all the way over to his house right here. Whoa! So this is the Black Jinjo family house. Thanks for rescuing me. I live in this house with the rest of my similar colored family. Uh, they're definitely not there right now. I'm sorry, dude. So the same, we rescue them and they'll give us the family uh, family heirloom. So basically, if we get all nine of the black Jinjos, then we get a Jiggy for that. Now, there's nine different families and each one has a different amount. The black Jinjo family has nine. Uh, there's different ones with like one Jinjo, two, three, four, all the way up through the range. So different families are easier to complete. Uh, one more thing I want to show down here. This is actually a shortcut back to the Isle of Hag's uh, Jinjo village portion. Now, I'm not sure why exactly this is honestly here because you could just take the silo back but if you wanted to take this you could and one funny thing there's actually a bit of an exploit right here uh, you don't have to go through the bottle, uh, bottles his house because you can actually just do like this a little bit tricky but there you go you can do a talent trot jump into a flutter into a ground pound and you can actually make it up here so if you want to skip going through the bottles house thing you could do that I'm not sure what consequences that'll have on the game because I've never done that in a playthrough but you could so that's pretty cool. Now, one thing down here. This is going to be vastly different from my playthrough than someone who's playing N64. So I'll explain exactly what I mean in just a minute. First, let's go back here and read this sign. I don't think it says anything too important. Uh, suitable eggs may be found closer to home than you think. All right, sounds like a riddle. I don't, I don't know how to interpret that. But let's go inside here. Let's see what they have to say. Of course, there's a Heggie's egg shed. There's a giant chicken inside of a giant egg. Uh, hi, Heggy. Yep, something egg-related does indeed happen here. So we have to find special eggs. However, if we actually go over to our view totals, we can check out the items we've already gathered. And if I go to the right, I've already got a whole bunch of special eggs. These are the stop and swap eggs. We got these during my Banjo Kazooie playthrough. Now, because this is the Xbox Live Arcade version, the stuff we gathered in that one carries over to this one. There's a couple of these that you can get in the N64 version, and I'll show those when we can, but... Yeah, because I have the Xbox Live version, it all carries over, so I already have all six eggs. Let's go ahead, turn them in, and see what we got. This is a very slow process, though. You have to give them one egg at a time, so I guess we'll go ahead and toss over the first one. And I'll use the power of video editing to make this a little bit less painful. So let's just go run over here, check this thing into the nest. And that is the yellow one right there. Come on, Haggy. So Heggie's gonna go hatch it for us. She's just gonna like clumsily walk over there. Oh my gosh, did you have to go in such a wide circle? Then she just like jumps on top of it, rubs her butt on it, and jumps off. I mean, I could have done that. All you did was rub your butt on it. How is that anything special? But for that, we get a gamer pick. That's actually for our Xbox uh, 360 profile. So here's a little shot of that. And now we have to wait for Heggie to come all the way back. And I guess, let's go through the process of giving him all the eggs. I think each one has different dialogue, so I'll show the dialogue at least. But that long animation, I can cut that out. So let's uh, chuck it into the same nest right here. This is the red egg. And this one gives us a Banjo-Kazooie theme for the Xbox 360. So here's a little view of that as well. Yes, at least they managed to fit us in around all those boxes. Heck yeah, Kazooie. And for some reason, we have to like save to the hard drive the theme. So there we go. Just four more to go, guys. We got this. Give him the third egg. Hope it's something good. Maybe I'll grant my wish to star in my own game. Oh, dude, a Kazooie game would be awesome. 
Now, right there, Banjo just said that Rare still has plans for us. This came out in 2009 on the Xbox version, so this actually came out after uh, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. So maybe they still have plans, but those might have been scrapped. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe they had intentions of making a new game, but they got buried by something. Who knows? And for that green egg, we get homing eggs. So this one, we actually have to go and enter a cheat at some point. We don't actually have access to that yet. And that one in particular, you can actually get in the N64 version as well, just not quite as early. So I'll show that one off when I can. So let's keep going. This one does seem heavy. Hmm. Well, let's go check out what's inside. This one is the blue egg. And inside the blue egg, we get Briggle Bash. So this one is we press X and then X again. And we actually get a brand new attack, which is pretty cool. This one is once again in the N64 version as well. So all we do is hit X twice. <laughs> and yep, that is what we do. We just pull Kazooie out of our backpack and smash her into the floor. That is <laughs> kind of hilarious, but also very violent. I think we have one more egg left. Another heggy egg. Egg hatching. Who'd have thought Stop and Swap would come to this? It'll be Machines next. Yep. And here we have the... Pink egg, I guess? Special Heggy Award, Jinjo as multiplayer character. I'm not sure if that one's in the N64 one, but yes, there is indeed multiplayer in this game, so I'll try to show that off at some point, probably like after I beat the game as a, a bonus episode or something. Let's see if that's all of them. Do you want an egg? Oh, there's still one more egg, let's do it. Last egg, here we go, tired now, I would imagine. How do you think I feel carrying them for 10 years? So they're kind of joking that we've had these stop and swap eggs for 10 years since the original N64 game. But there is the cyan egg, so let's go see what it is. And for our last special egg, the one we carried over from the Banjo-Kazooie version. Uh-oh. Oh my, what is it? Very special Heggy Egg Award! Cluck, this might be useful! One day. Cluck. Here we go again. Well, at least that means we'll get to see our 20th birthdays. You think so? Surely Rare will make the next game faster than that. Probably not. I would, I would not bet on that, Banjo. So, it didn't actually pop up right there because I've already unlocked this on my profile before, but we actually just unlocked Stop and Swap 2. I'm not sure if I can go show you. Let me, let me go check if I can. But we now have Stop and Swap 1 and Stop and Swap 2 because things were not complicated enough. You can see all the eggs we've already used got check marks, and that ice key right there will come in handy a bit later. But right over here, yes, we do indeed have Stop and Swap 2. Now, I have a few things unlocked already because it's not tied to your particular file it's tied to your entire save data so i'll show you guys how i got these in, in an upcoming episode probably in a few a few days but we're finally done with the stop and swap stuff for now so let's go ahead exit and actually go unlock our first real stage so we're just about to end all of the uh, tutorial type stuff i know it's kind of been pretty long-winded but like i said this game starts off pretty slow once we get to the next episode things will definitely pick up so stay tuned for that well, let's go right up here let's talk to the doorman I am a lonely disciple of Jiggy Wiggy! I work the door of his sacred temple to keep out those who are not worthy. Sounds like fun, are we worthy? Uh... Yeah, that's a good question. So we have to collect images in the form of Jiggy Wiggy, which means we have to collect the Jiggies, which we have one from King Jingling. So... Go ahead and let me in. Yep, that sounds familiar indeed. Yeah, we just... We only have one, but hopefully that's enough. Yeah, one is all we need! No cameras permitted, and only food purchased at Make Jiggies can be eaten within. Well, ah, oh, crud. That sounds legit. Let's just go inside, and let's go uh, unlock the stages. So all the stages we unlock are going to be unlocked through this temple. We're on top of the great Crystal Jiggy right now. Greetings, O oh Chosen One. You have entered the sacred temple of Jiggy Wiggy. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. They have like a an order or a cult or something based around Jiggies. I don't know, it's really strange, but what we have to do is go over here and actually play a little puzzle game. If you watched uh, the first game, you probably saw me do the puzzle games in Bottles' uh, little room thing. So that's all we have to do. We got these pieces fly apart, and we just have to complete this within a time frame. Now, it's very, very easy. The first game had some very challenging puzzles. This one is not challenging at all. Uh, we have just way more time than you will ever need. Even if you're just messing up a lot and really just going slow, you still will not have much trouble. So you can see we have like 100 seconds on the clock, and I'm just about done already. It's very easy. So there's Jiggy Wiggy's Challenge 1 completed. Now the Great One will show us the way. So I think there's going to... Well, every time you want to open up a stage, you come back here, you do one of these puzzles, and then the Crystal Jiggy kind of unlocks it for you. Watch how intense the magical powers of the Great Crystal Jiggy are! Behold the power of the mighty Jiggy Wiggy! 
can shoot some giant light laser beam things right out of the sky. Gosh dang Dragon Ball Z up in here. Got some Kamehameha and all that crud. And all that power is going to be channeled to one point. Here we go. And for all of that, they open up a door. Yes, all of that was just to open a door. I know it's <laughs> kind of stupid, but whatever. Yes, I, I could have done that. I could have just like walked up and lifted it or something. But no, they got to go through this crazy, crazy cutscene and everything. But all right, guys, we finally have opened up our first stage. I know it took two episodes to get to this point, but I think we're going to call things here, guys. Next time, we'll go inside and finally begin Mayhem Temple. See you guys then. Take care.